Hi there. Let's take a look at uh, discovering rhythms with your forms. Let's um, uh, open up our live silhouette project. I'm just uh, pressed comma on the keypad and I'm just going to slide off to the right and there's my live silhouette project. All right, so here it is opened up. Um, we're going to be creating uh, 10 or more forms using DynaMesh. You can use these spheres. You can uh, use inserted poly meshes. Uh, however you want to, to do that in, in Silhouette. Um, the project that you've created uh, lends itself to all of those aspects and I'll be demonstrating those after this. But let's talk a little bit more. Let, let's just get right into uh, areas of balance, areas of strength, weakness, speed, and rest. And, and you know, enhancing your character traits with that single through line, that single gesture uh, before you get going. Now in Silhouette, it makes it a little bit easier. We're in Symmetry. Uh, I'm going to grab the Move Brush and let's just pull this down right away. Now already, like without doing anything at all, there's something already there. I have, you know, we all recognize certain forms. We have shoulders here. If I droop them down, I've got the indication of a head. And this is, there's nothing here. There's absolutely nothing here. It's just a shadow. But you see those elements already suggested in the silhouette. That simple line suggests posture, right? It suggests a gesture. And that's what we want to, to think about first when we're creating the silhouettes. So we have this form. I can bring this down and I can see almost a chest in there. Uh, we're going to arch the back a little bit. We're going to bring this forward. We're going to drop this a little further down. And what have I created just in that simple shape? I've created a gesture which indicates proudness or, or uh, some strength in there. There's feeling in that shape right away. There's feeling in this shape right away. And now we're, we're just going to balance those two as we move uh, into creating the rest of of a silhouette. Um, there's an aspect of speed to this form as well. You know, if this were a teardrop that would be falling this direction, there's a directionality to it that we're familiar with, uh, and it's here as well in terms of a body, the width of the shoulders, the tapering. This is a normal form that we all recognize, right? And let's talk about strength and weakness. There's a strength in this pose. There's a thickness to the upper torso that we recognize, or that we, we I believe is an upper torso. Um, uh, and there is a thinness, and, a, and not necessarily a weakness, but a uh, softness to the curve, to this S curve, uh, in the way that it creates a particular posture. And I can pull these out a little bit further, and it's still there. It's still there because there is a bit of a return up at the top in the form, in the in the thickest part of this form, which we read as strength. So there's a the chest is out. Now, walking for, let's say he's facing from left to right. He's facing right on the screen. He's facing over here. What if he's still facing this direction? What do I read now? Well, his chest is shrinking back. That area of form which we recognize as normally as a strength area is f facing back. He's not cowering, but he's shrinking back. There's something in this simple gesture, which I've done barely anything to, and, and it's showing an emotional state. Right? We want to be aware of these types of decisions in our creation of the silhouettes. Uh, this inside curve when we consider which way he, this, this figure is facing, suggests weakness. That inside curve is, is a weak shape. This is a strong shape, depending on what direction he's facing, or it's facing. And that taper is a normal taper that we, we recognize as a body form, even from a distance. That ghostly specter type shape is apparent. So it's a good, if it reads, I mean, you can't get anything more simple than shapes like this. If you can make uh, assumptions about um, the character you're creating in these simple shapes, uh, 
the success rate goes up because you've already established something very important in that first form. So I want you to keep in mind as we move forward uh, into our next set of demonstrations for the silhouetting process, um, areas of strength, areas of weakness, and the shapes that you create and how in your mind they suggest those aspects of the character. Is it moving quickly? Is it grounded instead of moving quickly? Is there a solidity to the form? Like this quick change in form that flattens that out. It seems static now because it is f fixed in a way that we recognize as being flattened or next to the ground or their suggested surface here. There's no more mo motion in this piece that the fluidness of this form stops. And then that stop is created by a um, extreme form change in the silhouette. Right? If I flip that up this way, we have shoulders, no head, and there's a break in the form and you're, in your mind you're going, what happened here? Where's the rest of him? He's headless. Right? That's the first thing I thought. The sky is headless. Right? When we make adjustments like that, when we bring this in, there's an area of weakness here, and still something's missing. It still feels like there's something missing there. How does it feel now? Right? It feels complete. There's something about that shape that's more complete than the one previous. So I want you to keep in mind those simple adjustments in form are really, really important. And uh, you want to be thinking about those uh, off the start so that um, you know, you're reading or your uh, the viewer when they see your silhouettes are reading some of the decisions you're making. Um, let's talk about rest. Right now, this is not really resting. There is a this form isn't really stopping. It, it really is just continuing on. Um, it's smooth all the way around. There's no harsh breaks in the form in this direction that give your eye a chance to stop. It just continues around the form. It's smooth and it, it suggests speed. So how do we create areas of rest in our silhouette? Well, just like we did w when we had this upside down and, the, and this form was flattened out, that extreme change in direction, that form change, um, causes an area of rest. We have to pause to change direction. So there is a change here that is shocking that we don't recognize, right? So when you're, when you're we don't recognize that in in silhouettes of human beings we see or people or objects often. You see it in vehicles. You see it in, you know, boxy vehicle shapes. And you can recognize that form change quickly, right? Um, so areas of rest in your silhouette. If we're doing something like this, we're suggesting a body form. Do we have a we have a, a chest that's that's uh, being protruded out. What works to create areas of rest are, um, for example, let's just go to the clip curve brush. Sorry, let's correct that and go to the go to the curve brush. Let's flip that around. If I start clipping off sections, right now we begin to create areas of rest in this fluid form because the the, the silhouette breaks sharply, and you have to pause to make that form change. This is fluid, it moves, there's not a lot stopping our eye, but that adjustment, that stark adjustment in a form change creates an area of rest. And you're gonna see it in, uh, you know, areas, for example, at the back of, the back of the body where the, where the um, lats come down, they hit the hip, Relatismus torsi, where your hip meets your torso. 
right? You have that break in form there, so your eye rests at these spots. You know, and adding a bit of sharpness to those form changes creates those areas of rest. Right? There we go. So now you can begin to, I can begin to see a shape in here. Um, I never get too concerned about all of this stuff. I like that it actually just breaks. I just want to, you want those things to shred, to shred all those polys, it doesn't matter in the creation of your forms. Well, there you go. Keep those in mind. Areas of rest, areas of speed, balance. We want this to be a balanced form. So working in symmetry helps us do that. It's balanced left and right. And then if you're going to have a lot of upper forms here, having this super, super thin and small doesn't really lend itself well to the support of this much weight, unless it's a fly flying creature, unless it's floating, that might make sense. I mean, you can explain away a lot of these things by simply making decisions, um, but those decisions need to be based, as we've suggested in, our, in the first section, on your context library. Right. We're going to get into a few more principles other than these, uh, the principles of rhythm uh, and uh, strength, balance, weakness, speed, and rest that we've discussed. Uh, we're going to get into some basic anatomy principles I also want you to keep aware of as you're creating these silhouettes. And once, you, once you've read them and, and, uh, you know, and they're in your mind, you can, you can leave them aside and just continue sculpting. Uh, making these shapes, but they'll be in there. Once you've reviewed them, they're going to be you're going to be keeping them in mind. They don't need to be right beside you as you as you're working. So there you go. All right, let's move on to the next section. Let's discuss a little bit more about simple principles of uh, anatomy we want to keep in mind as we go forward in the silhouette process. Okay, well we talked a little bit about um, strength and weakness in our silhouettes, uh, speed and rest. Let's talk a little bit about balance. Um, as our characters get developed, uh, we just want to balance it in many ways. I want you to keep that in mind as you're developing these forms. Uh, let's turn X on so our, so our X symmetry is active and we're in the move brush. So one of the ways to create balance is working in symmetry, of course. When you pull your object to the left and to the right, you're getting similar shapes on either side. Um, and that creates, naturally, symmetry, but also balance of the form. And when we think of, of balance, you know, objects standing on the heads of pins and things like that, this triangular shape comes into mind. This triangular composition um, comes into mind. And that's sort of a um, sort of a simple principle that I want you to to keep in mind for a lot of things. And one of them uh, in anatomy is that you know our arms taper from the thickest point of the shoulder out to the fingertips, which are small and tapered for a reason. We need strength and muscle at this end of our arm to support and activate the thinner, lighter elements of our hand. So all the structure. Uh, in our forearms are larger because they need to power the thinner forms of our fingers. So everything tapers in that way in anatomy from the thickest portion to a thin portion, from our hips to our feet, right? From our hips to our feet, from our shoulders to our torso, from our shoulders to our arms, right? All of that is a is a triangular uh, formation, that weighted formation, um, which I want you to keep in mind. And it's a, a simple principle that I use uh, in the development of forms that um, plays around in the back of my brain as as I work. 
um, so that um, you know my, my silhouettes read as more realistic. Um, so I want you to keep that in mind. Well, that's part of balancing form as well. So you're balancing this weight on a single point, perhaps. This seems more grounded. It also gives it directionality, as we spoke about. But this is balanced as well. That triangular composition helps to um, create uh, the distribution of weight and believability in terms of balance. Now, if we're looking at balance of forms throughout the whole entire um, design, let's say we have some fairly large uh, shoulder elements here. We have the beginnings of a of a tapered head. These is that a scale? Let's just bring that in. We have the sort of the back and lat bringing in to the torso. If this just drops away, it's balanced left and right, but not it's balanced on the left and right, but not the top and the bottom. So these cool forms which we've created in the shoulders, just to create a bit of balance across the piece might be useful here in the leg or the hip or this this I mean we're creating a single form so far in the front view perhaps that's a tail but that little jut out at the hip or at the thigh creates balance in the top and bottom this weight at the shoulders this width at the shoulders, I should say, might feel better across the whole piece if this section were as wide as that section. And that creates balance through the form as well. And you have to be mindful of that, a little bit careful about how far you go with carrying these forms uh, up and down the piece because it can begin to feel blocky or formless. You just want to keep that in mind. So this nice movement through the piece with um, some elements of form brought from the top, the hip, and middle in threes, that always helps. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. And the gesture that we, we spoke about. I'm just going to give this character some gesture here. We're going to make him a little bit a weakness. This is this form, this J form, is something that we suggest with our, or we interpret as a head down, a sadness is in that shape when he's facing this direction. If he's facing this direction, here, if he's still facing to the right, this is, becomes an odd shoulder or back detail. But there's still not a defined strength or weakness there. Possibility. But this curve sells something about old age, weakness, infirmity. There's something about that simple gesture that allows us to uh, make some assumptions about the character. So that form in the side view Right. This weakness, this inside shape in weakness is repeated down here, the inside shape of the legs, or the suggested form of the legs. And then we just need to bring the feet into balance to complete this sort of triangular formation that will allow him to stand. And that balances the weight of the character is another a way you can think of in terms of balance. Poor thing. I feel sad for it already. All right. Keep that in mind, uh, or those simple principles of balance uh, in mind as you proceed with your character creation.
know, something cool started right there.